I've been hearing some chirps and warbles from all these little birds. They say some regular guests of the stable at late have arrived very late. The chief here, Gotta, he was going to meet with them to learn a new recipe. One that Princess Zelda taught them. Hmm, my keen reporter instincts say something very wrong here. God has been over there waiting for his guest to arrive. He's barely moved this whole time. Hmm. Let's see. Yeah, it's not unusual for guests to decide not to show up, right? But what if they're unable to? They were coming to share a recipe from Princess Zelda too. Hmm. That could be a part of this. Oh. Those chirps and warbles are worth looking into. Okay, I guess we need to go and talk to the dude. Also, we found the Riverside Stable. My dear, dear wife, I ass... Steady, opponent. Hello. Oh. Something isn't right. Argus and the rest. Oh, oh, they would have crossed this bridge to get here. What's going on? Oh, I didn't notice you there. Um, there's a customer. If you're looking for the stable services, head over to the counter. I've been waiting to greet some guests I was expecting. But it's well past the time and they should have been arriving. I'm extremely worried. Oh. They've always crossed Holland Bridge. Oh, that's the teacher from Skyward. In the past, when they were coming here. I figured if I kept my eye on the bridge, I'd catch sight of them eventually. Those guests are all gourmet. That leader, the, che the chef named Argus, has taught me a lot about cooking. Mm. Oh, they were all excited to visit and I was looking forward to it. They have a recipe from Princess Zelda to share. Hmm, if Argus and the others have tents, they, they may, they're maybe they're taking a trip nice and slow camping along the way. Hmm. Still, still they haven't shown up yet. I have a bad feeling about this. It's not as if Hyrule became communist either when the king died and they just got rid of the monarchy. They still have an archaic system that heavily relies on monarchy that just isn't there. Well, yeah, there was a hundred years where there was no king, so it all became like little fiefdoms. Uh, hey, Epona. Oh, wow, you managed to make it all the way here. Uh, good job. Yeah, it's... The thing that confuses me, it's not like it's like royal family who. It's... If the Sheikah was still talking about the, uh, the princess, fair enough, because they are sworn to the royal family. But in terms of the rest of the people of Hyrule, I don't quite understand what's going on. They, technically, they could have easily said, yes, uh, I have no legends of the royal family, but that's about it. It's not like... I, I suppose it was too much of a headache for them to try and figure it out, but still, you get one person in charge, the princess, and then she can unite the peoples, especially with all the... Let's face it, if they hadn't given everyone amnesia, Link could very easily have become king, just because of his, like, Arthurian status of he went round and helped all the people, so the people would probably be more likely to follow him, especially when he was the hero who slayed the demon, but no, apparently not. So, uh, then it. And even if Zelda didn't want to do Queen stuff, Link still could have created a royal army. He he could have. It didn't even need to be a royal guard. It could have been the Hyrulean guard. It could have been some sort of guard faction that goes around that looks after the people of Hyrule. But apparently we don't get that. That's a treasure. I didn't mean to shoot that. Oh well, I can at least get the arrow. I don't know where the arrow's gone. That's annoying. Um. I don't know what I'm supposed to do down here. I get the feeling I'm missing a trick. Hmm. What if I blow it up? Oh, it's like that, is it? Thank you. 
There we go. All that for a throwing spear. Though in Furnace, that throwing spear does have triple attack attached to it. Bye, Gloom Spear. <laughs> yep. They exist purely as a symbol and... Uh, wait, they exist purely as a status symbol and the Prime Minister does all of the... Wait, where did... Oh. If the royal family served the same role as modern day royal family in Japan, they would make that would make more sense. They exist purely as a state. They exist as a head of state. It's simple as that. I think they've still got a certain sway of power, but they act as a head of state. Slightly different from our royal family, where technically they still hold power. Not a lot. Well, they, they hold a power, to be exact. I mean, they still have to get the king's permission to form a government. Oh goody, lightning. Okay, I just had to swap on my sword. That's alright. So we've done that well. Can we count that well as done? I think we can count that well. Um Problem. I don't know where I am on the map now. Uh Problem solved, I found where I am on the map. Close out that. That is each nation would have its own army, but say the Goron made a return. Uh, say Ganon made a return. All those armies would join together and defeat Ganon with Link at the front. To be honest, it didn't. I'm surprised they didn't do that in Breath of the Wild. Can you imagine how awesome it would have been? You brought all of the uh, you brought all of the peoples back together after a hundred years. You saved the Gorons, you saved the Zora, you saved the Rito, and you saved the Gerudo, and then they all came back together in the final battle with the Calamity Ganon. So you had the Divine Beast that took down the Calamity in Hyrule Castle, and then in the fight in Hyrule Fields, you had the armies of the of the, of the others appear to fight by your side to take down the demon Ganon. That would be awesome. It would also be awesome if they had it in this game. Though either they did it, even if they did it in this game, it would feel not as epic, to be honest. I mean, in the previous game, I, they, I don't know, it just, I'm using the Rito as my only example, it doesn't feel like the other races are quite as involved as they were in Breath of the Wild. In Breath of the Wild, they had the legends of their champions. Which sort of tied them into the plot. Here it's a case of something bad happened and now the sky is weird. It's just, uh, I don't know, it just feels le it feels more style and substance in this game right now. Okay, opponent. Let us go and find these missing people. And then when we come back, I really need to sort myself out with getting some food. Oh, oh. oh, well. oh I've got plenty of time. <sighs> okay, um, give me a minute. Worked. Wow. Even with the Master Sword souped up with a Silver Boss the Coblin Horn, that's how much damage I did to that Silver the Coblin. They're not just, they're just HP, they're just attack sponges, aren't they? Somebody's really ramped them up to ludicrous levels. I 
I mean, I get it. It makes the stakes higher, but still. Probably TP for... Uh, the best scene of fighting Ganon... Uh, a big battle scene at the end with uh, fighting Ganon at the end. Yeah, pretty much. That would have been so cool. Exactly. Um, did you know we... Uh, oh, right, that's the Spizbot saying we've got a Discord. Yes, we do. Best Ganondorf Ganon fight was either Wind Waker or TP. I think more TP than Wind Waker. But then again, I've never finished Wind Waker, so uh, that's fair enough. Hmm, hold on, give me a minute. Final boss in Ocarina of Time hasn't aged well, no, it kind of didn't. Um, it was basically playing ping pong and then using the bigger on sword to smash Ganon's tail repeatedly. TP was a good one, and TP was one that you couldn't have had a great big, uh, massive army fight because the game the story didn't really, really lead well to it. It was like a secret war, which was amazing. Well, I suppose you could have had the the people of Twilight Prince, uh, the people of the Twilight rise up. You could have also had um, the Hero Shade make an appearance as well, considering the, his background. But either which way. We had a massive battle of the armies, the free armies of Hyrule. But, ah well. We got what we got. We'll see what we get with this game when we fight Ganon. But at the same time, it just... Uh, we'll see. It's good, It's got big shoes to fill. Twilight Princess was amazing when you think about it, because you basically stormed the castle... You took out Ganon. You took out the pup. You took out Puppet Zelda. Then you took out. Then you had a massive fight with the be with Beast Ganon, that actual Ganon. And then after that, you defeat him. But then he still returns. Uh, Royal Broadsword. What can we get rid of? Um. Yeah, oh, I didn't. Oh, crud. he still comes back for more. And then it ends on a one-on-one -on -one duel. Sorry for spoilers, by the way, but it is an old game. It's just amazing. Um, okay, that's fine. Well, I know who I'm reading after this stream. Sorry, distracted by Discord. Uh, right. Well, yeah, we'll see. We'll see if this game can fill those boots. But at the same time, it feels a little limp-wristed when... Basically, what we saw in the Dragon Tears is this is just a, a rudimentary retelling of... Oh, crumbs. It's a rudimentary retelling of Ocarina, or at least in terms of the Ganon stuff. Ganon appears before the King of Hyrule, pledging allegiance, but it's a two-faced trickery to try and get power, which kind of works. And it's just... And then he gets the magical MacGuffin, and then he... The... I... It's a soft reboot, isn't it? We might as well forget the majority of stuff that's happened with the previous game, because it's just a reboot. Million tomatoes, nice. Oh, this is one where I'm going to have to chop down a bunch of trees to stick up the sign, isn't it? Um,
There we go, Hudson. Look, I've fixed your sign with the power of trees. Um, I'm going to point them. In nearly every Zelda game, the races have always played a pivotal role in the story and lore of that game. Wind Waker not so much, which is fine because of the overall story of the game, whereas nearly everyone drowned and Hyrule was flooded, so not many people were really around. There we go. That was another one where there was no royal family because there was no royal family, so they all had their own independent nations. But in Ocarina of Time, the sages of all races came together to help seal Ganon at the end. Probably not in this game. Probably not. It'll be a case that the sages will lend me their power to help me fight in the final fight with Ganon. Oh, wait! They can't! Because when we got to the depths of Hyrule, the power of the sages could no longer reach me. So I'm probably not going to have their power assisting me in whatever endeavours I do. <laughs> Balls if I know. It'll be awesome if they all just suddenly show up at the end. I mean, we had that cutscene in Twilight Pre in, uh, uh, Breath of the Wild, where all the sages pulled together bomb, marvellous, pulled together to take out half of Calamity Ganon's uh, health bar, but I don't know if we'll get something like that in this game. It'd be cool if it did, but I don't really know where they're going with it. Right, we've done a Hudson sign. I should probably mark that one as done, just in case. Right. So, we're now following the path, I assume, to try and find these missing travellers. I trust you, opponent. Oh, there's a bunch of tents. Well, I suspect that's probably where we're supposed to be going. Oh, okay. Well, um, something happened. Oh, help, please. Princess Cell, her recipe is written, don't improvise. Princess Zelda, meat and rice bowl. Combine plain raw meat, Hillian rice and rock salt. This flavorful, comforting dish is sure to fill you with energy, but be sure to follow the recipe to the letter. Meat, rice, rock salt. The ending of Ocarina of Time is still amazing, though, with Zelda's lullaby playing as she explains uh, what, ha uh, what happens if you choose to go back in time and all the people uh, partying together in the credit roll. Exactly. But Zelda's lullaby playing at the end just hits right on the spot. Indeed. They played that also when she turned into a dragon. Uh... After all the cooking, always follow recipe. Uh, no. Bugger off. I think animal meat, right? Maybe. Uh, oh. Who suggested monster meat? Uh, oh. Oh. Here, have this normal meal. Oh. Uh, that, that smell. Uh. Hey, yo, yeah, you can, can, can. I had that rice bowl. Please, please, I need to eat it. <laughs> this, I recognize this flavor. <laughs> this is the recipe the Princess Zelda shared with us. Hey, they still call her princess. It's just. George, Tilly, and Dale, please hurry up and take a bite of this. Oh, thank you for helping us. We were not doing well at all. Princess Elf taught us how to cook this dish quite some time ago. We ran into her once during our travels. She was full of kindness for us, despite our group being a little ragged on the road. 
But I remember how the, the, now that she said we need to follow the recipe exactly. Probably because she thought you were idiots and you'd probably try something like using monster meat. Oh, it's just a tower. I thought it was a divine beast. Ugh, whose bright idea was it to substitute monster parts in place of raw, real meat? Uh... That was me. I'm sorry. I was just curious what it would taste like. I thought maybe a recipe would work well with monster parts. Ah. Oh, to gourmet greatness is littered with stuff you wouldn't think is tasty. You've got to expand your palate. Exactly! See? These people understand it! The rice bowl isn't that special, dude. Come on down. Calm down, I guess. But it's a rice bowl! A bowl of rice! With meat! With meat! Now's not the time to sit and figure out the best practices for future dietary exploits. We gotta get to Riverside Stable. We're so late, I'm sure God has been worried about us. Ah. We really are grateful for your help. Let me say again on behalf of everyone, thank you. You don't even, you don't even know us, but you used valuable ingredients to save us from ourselves. Yeah, please take this. Cool. That's the mm -hmm. bit I needed. And this. And that. Mm. And finally. Go! Oh, go, Mimi. I'll take it. Mm -hmm. We like cooking with the very best raw meat when we have it. We can use all of this to cook yourself a meat and rice bowl sometimes. Anyway, we'd better get ready and head off to the Riverside Stable since we plan to be there well before now. Ah. I have to get going. Hopefully, we'll run into each other in the future. Also, you have to remember these people still haven't discovered the machinations of farming after a hundred odd years. I know, all ranching. Where the hell are the fields of food? Like rice and fields of wheat fields. But no, no, in Hatino. Hatino have farming. Hatino figured out how to do the farming. And the Zora do the fishing. And the Rito do the um, hunting, I suppose, because they've got the bows. And the Gorons do the blacksmithing and the forging. I must admit, you would think there would be a few more settlements with farming, but maybe they've deemed it too dangerous with all the monsters because it's not like they have a guard or anything. Well, if it isn't my pun. Hi. Did you stub your toe? What was that? Oh. Any luck finding those missing travelers yet? Yeah. I just started to scout out for them from the sky when I saw you down here. You chased down any leads at all? Oh. Well, they were right here, too queasy to even move. And you helped them get them back on the feet again. Mm. Interesting, I never knew poison could be healed by a meat rice ball. Either way, the chirps and warbles really were on to something. I'm impressed that Princess Zelda's vast knowledge have included things I wouldn't expect, like recipes for dishes. Okay, one. It's just a meat and rice bowl. Even I could probably cook that. Uh, two. It's just a meat and rice bowl. Doesn't take a genius to figure that out. Three. Stop trying to big up the brilliance of Princess Zelda. We've already seen she's incompetent. And also, in the terms of the game, she is a goddess. We know she's brilliant. You do not need to remind us of how glorious the Princess Zelda is with all her genius of ruling this kingdom and rebuilding the basis of government. Oh wait, no, she built a school and is prattling around as a head mistress. <laughs> Opponent could lead this country better. <sighs> How very clever of them. Yes, indeed. Imagine having a train in Tears of the Kingdom. That would make me buy the game. I like trains. Trains are awesome. Tears of the Kingdom with Spirit Strikes Train would be fun as hell. It would be. I think it'd be a bit too much to ask in the period between Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, but... You'd think that you'd see some sort of, I don't know, convoy of goods transitioning across the kingdom instead of just random wagons. 
You've got Hudson who's charged with rebuilding the kingdom. Why do we not have more settlements than Breath of the Wild? We have one. Lookout Landing. That's it. That was the grand scope of everything. You didn't start re-inhabiting the burnt towns and destroyed villages. You didn't reopen Lon Lon Ranch. You couldn't have brought in a new character in the form of Malon to run the ranching and look after the wild horses and actually start producing horses, considering horses are kind of important when transporting stuff across a kingdom that doesn't have any other sort of mechanations. You don't have the Sheikah building grand technologies like they used to. Or at least trying to make, I don't know, cars or guardian-powered movement cargo things? No, apparently not, because this is the... I It just feels so lazy in places. It's a sequel, it should be building off the previous one, not just changing out some of the previous mechanics and saying, Look, we did a thing. Oh, I got a new shiny Pura pad instead of the Sheikah Slate. And instead of apps, I have a magic arm. And instead of guardian uh, champion abilities, I have sage powers. Ooh. God, and then this is just a full-blown... This is just a DLC. That's it. This is just a DLC that grew into a, into a game. It's not a sequel. It's an expansion! Oh, well. Though I'm impressed that Princess Zelda's vest... Oh, I already read that. You know, we've now chased five of these leads that might have something to do with the Princess Zelda. Your investigations are the talk of the office down at the Lucky Clover Gazette. You've really shown some promise. <laughs> And it turns out the paper is doing really well, thanks to the articles we keep putting together. Which is why Trissy told me we're both getting raises. Go on, now this to your nest egg, partner. So by raise you mean the same money I got from last time. A recipe from Princess Zelda, perfect for getting the folks into fun shape. Yeah, the article almost writes itself. Almost. If by in shape you mean giving them scurvy, then yeah, go for it. <laughs> so long, friend. I like Pen. Pen is one of the better additions of this game. Oh, look, it's... Bugger off. Kill it! Kill... No, I okay. You tried, Epona. You tried. Probably start selling some of the cobbler horns, come to think of it. When we get back to the stable, I'll talk to Beetle. Uh, okay. I was kind of hoping that was going. Oh, never mind. Right. Alright, oh, that's the tear of green. Okay. Ay, ay. <clears throat> right, so back to the stable, do some cooking, then continue on the joyous journeys of sorting out various bits and pieces. Korok seed hunting, potentially as well. Right, let's do some cooking. Mm, actually, let's add a couple of prime meat to that as well. <coughs> Yeah, okay.
Um. Yeah, we'll do some full recovery ones, why not? <laughs> Energizing. Yeah. A delay on something. Okay. Sorry, give me a minute. Uh... Oh, alright. Oh, no. Um. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to modify the permissions on that server, and that's a thing. Sorry, give me a minute. Important business happening. Um. Oh no, it's the stupid thing. It's X now, isn't it? Go. Go. There we go. Cool. Oh. Right, sorry. Um, like the recipe that cook. And just normal healing meals because yes. <laughs> right. Like the recipe. <laughs> what if I have that? What well, I add in some normal meat. Does it give me extra hearts? <laughs> yes, I think. I'm gonna have to try and find some hillian rice at some point. At this point, I might as well just cook meals with the maximum number of hearts, and if I end up overblowing it, then I overblow it. <laughs> Quickly check how many recipes I've got, or how many things I've got. Meals. Okay, so we've got... Nah, well, I can't get any more than that. That still looks revolting. Um, right, I need to create some warding meat skewers. That's a replenish of that. Heat elixir. Da, 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 da. Now, I would be happy with Breath of the Wild in Breath of the Wild uh, with Breath of the Wild Three if they significantly built on more powerful hardware to work with. Yes, I have maintained this since they announced Tears of the Kingdom, or at least Breath of the Wild Two. It needed something more powerful than the Switch. That you can tell the hardware limitations. I mean, just the banners earlier in the stream where they were running at about 2 FPS. The game wants to run and the Switch is forcing it to crawl. It just needs... Nintendo needs to stop building on last-gen hardware, actually push the envelope like they used to, and actually shunt forward. I, I get the Switch was brilliant, don't get me wrong in the concept and it's created a lot of innovation in terms of the handheld and the docking experience but then you look at something like the steam deck and it blows it out of the water it just does if you could get if i could get nintendo games on the steam deck i probably would use the steam deck but i can't so i'm using the switch and i like the switch it's a nice little console but it needs more power it's why i for the love of all things holy cannot fathom why Nintendo turned around and said, Right, we need a refresh of the Nintendo Switch. I know, the OLED version. Oh, okay, what are we changing? Better processor, more memory, a bit of uh, extra VRAM? No, no, no. An increased screen, a better screen, an OLED screen. Maybe an update to the dock as well. Oh, okay. Um, 
what about the underlining hardware? Oh, well, ah, you see, we have it exactly the same. Saves on cost, you know. Uh, but wouldn't that affect performance? Oh, better battery. There we go, problem solved. It's stupid. Why? Why put an OLED in the Switch hardware? It's not going to do anything apart from make performance probably slightly worse. Just, you could have done a Switch Pro. You could have given it a new screen. Give it a better processor. Give it more memory. And off you, off you go. Off to the races. Marvellous. But no, apparently not. Because it was easier to just retool it with an OLED display. People are complaining that the next Switch is looking to have PS4 level hardware. It probably is in it. But have people seriously seen some of the games on PS4? Yeah, they don't run at 60 FPS because Sony tends to opt for realism over an artist uh, over artistic style. But on PS4, Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom would look amazing. Yes, because Nintendo's optimization, you have to bear in mind, I complain about the performance, but the fact that the game runs as well as it does... Really, it doesn't crash. Well, we had a couple of crashes in Breath of the Wild. We've not had a single crash in Tears of the Kingdom. The game works brilliantly. It's optimized brilliantly. If you can have that optimization with a stronger hardware base, you would have something amazing. This game at 60 FPS, you could push the envelope massively. But and that's why the PS5 is a great console. You have either performance mode or graphics mode. Exactly. Um, it would be nice to have a Switch with PS level, PS5 level hardware, but right now I don't know if it's physically possible and Nintendo tends to price their consoles at a lower price. All the cost of a Switch, you could probably get a Steam Deck. They could easily do the hardware. It, it's an SoC, it's not a standard processor, but if they had the Steam Deck hard, they could have easily... St the Steam Deck proved it. They don't need some all singing, all dancing... PS5 in a handheld form factor. They can just look at the Steam Deck. This is why the Steam Deck's important. This brings competition to the market. Nintendo could easily easily sat there as king of the hill saying, oh, the Switch just prints money and it's the per it's a portable console and it's brilliant and we are the king. And then Valve came out with the Steam Deck. And I've heard complaints about the Steam Deck, but for the most part, I've loved it. And the Steam Deck just... It puts competition. It forces Nintendo to up their game. Nintendo can either rest on their laurels and say people will still buy the Steam Deck, or they can push forward and they can go, right, there's our competition. Let's do what we did when we were fighting against Sega. Let's push the envelope and let's go forward and make things better. I don't know if the management's got that sort of mindset, though. I think we... I don't know. I... I... We'll see. We will see, but I'm not entirely sold on it. Um, right, I should also try and make some of these warden things. Not that I can find them. I've maintained for years that Nintendo needs to up their Steam Deck. Uh, not Steam Deck. They need to up the Switch hardware. They need a Switch Pro. I don't know what's taking them so long in figuring it out. Probably just playing it overly safe, as they seem to do in recent years. I remember saying to Liz that if the Switch 2 doesn't beat the Steam Deck, or at least match it, it will not do as well as the Switch has. Not at all because people just want to buy a Steam Deck. People buy a Nintendo console for the Nintendo 